Hello and welcome to my short presentation. Um, today I want to talk about Mike Cyanotype. Um, I tested his uh, new formula, the one without ammonium. Um, finally, I got the ingredients. I waited a long time for this. I ordered this uh, tree ammonium citrate. Um, this came from Germany, from the company Roth. R O T H. And um, yeah, finally I got the ingredients and I did some tests. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for my 100% cotton paper. It hasn't arrived yet, so I had to start and test the Winston Newton watercolor paper. Um, let's get to it. So the cyanotype recipe I'm testing is called Mike's cyanotype and you find the uh, instruction in Mike Ware's cyanomicon. I will put the link in the description. Um, we will need three ammonium citrate, iron nitrate nonahydrate, uh, potassium ferricyanide and purified water. And with these ingredients, we will create a one bottle solution, our sensitizer. And this is a sample here. Mine looks about yellow greenish. Um, it, after two days, it was a little bit darker. So I will see how long it will last. And for the wet processing step, you also need citric acid. Okay. So once you got all the chemicals needed, follow the instructions by Mike Ware. Um, read his Cyanomicon. I can only recommend it and follow all health and safety instructions, of course. I just made here a little um, graphic. So you need the tree ammonium citrate that you solve in water. Then you add slowly the iron nitrate nonahydrate solvent. Then you add the potassium ferrous cyanide solvent. It. It's all in one solution. You add some more water up to 100 mill milliliters and then fill it into a brown bottle for storage. Date it. It's about usable for months, probably longer if you store it cooler um, and in the dark. And if there is any um, sedimentation, you can also filtrate it if needed. I haven't observed it yet. So it's easy enough to do if you have the ingredients. Um, before you sensitize the paper, you can add some tween wetting agent to the uh, sensitizer. I left that out in my tests. Um, I have it, but I had some bad experience with it. So because I added too much once and then it gets all foamy. <laughs> so I just left it out. You don't really need it. And as I'm just testing an ordinary watercolor paper today, I thought Leave it out, makes things uh, easier. So for the wet processing, you will need a, a separate tray with some citric acid, uh, 1%. So you add 10 gram of citric acid per liter water and you will pre-process your print for half a minute in a citric acid bath before the final washing step um, for more contrast. So this is it. Uh, it's actually only different chemi chemicals, but the uh, steps are the same for every other cyanotype print after you sensitize your paper. So this is the watercolor paper I tested, Winston Newton. Um, one example was... Um, the solution on it before drying and I use a foam brush because that's the thing I can handle the best and I used a completely new unused foam brush. After the drying 
um, in the dark, okay, I unfortunately noticed directly fogging on the paper. So this, these are two examples, two different papers, but it's both the same. Um, most likely there is a hostile substance in the paper. It's not a good sign. Um, that showed after uh, coating. So, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. I thought, okay, nevertheless, let's do some prints. So I built my sandwich. This is a white foam board. On that is a felt-like uh, material. On top comes the paper, then the negative, then a, a, a mask, a frame and then a glass plate. Uh, I explained in my earlier video why we add the felt, because during the process uh, carbon dioxide gets produced and needs to evade, and you have to have uh, some room for the gas to go to, and that is provided by this felt-like structure under the paper. Now then I take my sandwich that I built and I put my light box over it. And this is a, uh, my setup. It's a box. It has an opening. On, on top of that I place my um, black light, my LED UV back, uh, black light with 365 nanometer uh, UV. And that's exactly what we need for our cyanotype. And I had good results with the classic formula, so I thought, okay, let's try it on Mike's cyanotype formula. And here on the right, you can see already one exposed uh, uh, image, so one print, and before I develop it. And it's still pretty blue, so I did not expose long enough for, so that was just four minutes, so it's underexposed before a tonal reversion is starting. So in here, in this case, this is the underexposed print, and you can see it looks already really pale. Uh, first I put in the citric acid bath for half a minute, and then I uh, place it into a water bath until no more blue is coming off the print, and then I hang it up for drying. And here I show you the, on the left side, you see how the citric acid bath is looking after a couple of washes, maybe three, four prints are washed. So it's looking pretty blue. So, and that is why you can only use one liter of the 1% solution for two to three, eight by 10 inch prints. Um, then you have to make new solution to wash your uh, prints with. So overall on the left you see the underexposed uh, example of four minutes, um, faint but has also a uh, <laughs> style. Um, six to eight minutes um, delivered similar results. I do not see much of a difference so if you have a lot of detail in the midtones, I think you can get away with a six minute exposure on the black light. So it works. It's pretty similar actually to the classic cyanotype under black light. So here I'm comparing the classic cyanotype on the left uh, on 100% cotton paper with the new formula by um, the Mike cyanotypes uh, on watercolor paper, which is actually not suitable. So the comparison is not fair, but similar results. And that is surprising me even on a watercolor paper, though the structure, the texture, uh, it's, it's not suitable, really. You lose a lot of detail, and you can see this now here in the direct comparison to the classic cyanotype on a better paper. Looks much better. So now I'm curious, how good will this um, 
new formula, Mike cyanotype look on cotton paper. If it already looks good on watercolor paper that is not suitable, I really have to find that out. So three more examples on the same uh, watercolor paper with longer exposure times. Um, like on the right, this is a simple contact print of dried algae. And here I overexposed uh, the print uh, by very, so <laughs> 11 minutes. is You don't need 11 minutes, but I wanted to create a maximum blue. And yes, even without a citric acid, bass step in the um, wet processing it turned out pretty blue so as my acid bass was already contaminated by other prints i just thought i couldn't be bothered doing a new one so i just washed it without and you can see i got a pretty dark blue and i will test this again uh, when i have the cotton paper uh, what are the results with or without citric acid bars? So according to Mike Webb, this is for better contrast. So if I had added that into a citric acid bath, should have been even darker? I don't know. We'll, we'll, I will find that out. Uh, otherwise, you see uh, with the daisies, um, there are a lot of midtones in the background. There's a lot of detail, although this is a not really suitable uh, paper, a lot of detail visible. So the range is really good, um, as you can see also on the cat. So here I'm just placing on the left side, you see classic cyanotype um, print and on the right side, uh, the print was uh, Mike's formula. And although the paper is not suitable, right? It's, it's not a good paper. You have such a better range. You have so many more shades of blue uh, than uh, with the classic cyanotype. It's, it, it, it's amazing. Okay, so I get a deep blue, but I also get a middle blue, a bit of a dark in this. So there is more depth and yeah, it looks very promising. So what are my results of my first test? Well, the Winston Newton uh, watercolor paper in my eyes is not very suitable for cyanotype uh, printing. So there is most likely hostile substance in the paper, but Mike's uh, cyanotype formula, uh, even the version without the ammonium with the uh, tree ammonium uh, citrate, I love it. It's easy to do. Um, well, you need uh, high quality uh, chemicals. They have to have a great purity, otherwise it will not work. Um, follow the instructions uh, in Mikeware Cyanomicon. I will put the link into the description and I cannot wait to test this formula on my Platinum Rack 100% uh, cotton paper. Yeah, and I will test also other papers. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.